Wogan is a, is a prime example where we can combine a unique location uh, with sustainability wildlife for conservation. Uh, the opportunity for guests to participate in a whole series of, of outdoor activities and, and, uh, and, and really immerse themselves in nature, but then don't have to um, shortchange themselves on, on, on true luxury. And true luxury for me is intuitive luxury, where guests can uh, really feel being pampered, that my staff are focused on what, what they want, uh, great local food, organic food, beautiful local wines, uh, and, and a true um, uh, ambassador role for, uh, for what uh, the Wogan Valley is all about and that bit of that part of New South Wales. The Global Sustainable Tourism Council um, is the organization that manages what is called the Global Sustainable Tourism Criteria, which is a common language, which is um, an understanding or a definition through standards that we identified two years ago by a set of experts around the world in the need of getting a common understanding, a global framework to which we could adjust sustainable tourism so that anybody who had a claim of sustainability, we could legitimately say, yes, they are sustainable because they meet these criteria and they are the same in Australia, Costa Rica, South Africa, Ireland, Scotland, China. I think we need to think of how we, we put the message across. You know, we need to do it, if we, if one hears these cliches over and over. Authentic is one of them, for example. Uh, when you say authentic, you're implying that it's not authentic. And we need to find cleverer ways. I think that we need to, to uh, bring in the skills of, of, of uh, creative people who can write these things and say them differently um, and put them across in a more exciting way. I talked about the international uh, perspective, what is happening overseas. And most of all, I talked about the power of the tourism industry to do good. Uh, the immense power that it has to change people's lives, to preserve the environment, uh, to make the world a better place. Mainly from my perspective, I deal in the US luxury space and I was here to communicate to this group that ecotourism is not just backpackers um, and people who want to rough it, that the affluent consumer is also looking for um, authentic, um, sustainable tourism companies that, do, that offer unique experiences and, they, and they're willing to pay for that. What we do is we take people away on um, extended tours. We have two types of product. In the city, in Adelaide, we do a half day and a full day tour in the city where we take people around and our focus is cultural. The second type of product we have is we have two to five day tours of the Flinders Ranges where we take people back to my traditional lands and as a traditional owner, I get to show people our cultural sites, you know, meet my elders, um, taste bush food, look at the animals and wildlife. That's, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about where you know, people know from the moment they jump into the vehicle to the moment they get out at the other end, they're actually getting the fair income experience. Worldwide, um, most of the properties that we help market and, and tour companies are international properties and so I work with the, mostly the US, the UK and the Latin America markets to get clients to go to these, to these um, excursions and destinations and so people are going worldwide. I think uh, Americans for sure um, have become much more active um, and engaged in long haul interactive travel like safaris, river cruising, going to the poles. And Australia, interesting enough, um, in a survey that I, that I presented at the conference, Australia is like the first true long haul destination that the five star traveler is saying they want to go in the next two years. So there's a huge opportunity for this part of the world. Uh, Ecotourism is quite popular in China and in recent years it's developing very fast.